What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, I'm going to try to make this video kind of shorter because I think this is really a stay busy fight, but I did want to get my prediction in for Gennady Golovkin versus Nobuhiro Ashida. Um, again, I think this is more or less a tuna fight for Gennady Golovkin, so I'll try to keep it short and simple. Um, as far as this fight, I really see Gennady Golovkin winning it um, by some means. I think he has a good chance to stop him in the mid to late rounds just based on his overwhelming amount of power, if not skate to a unanimous decision. Nobuhira Ishida, he's not a bum in the sport of boxing. You can't count anyone out, but realistically, most things are stacked against him. The only advantages that I really see is he is taller than Gennady Golovkin. I believe he's like six foot or six foot one, and Gennady Golovkin's a little bit shorter. And the fight is taking place in Monte Carlo, Monaco. So it's on neutral ground. Um, neither fighter is from there, obviously. So those are really the biggest advantages that I see. Other than that, um, in most statistical categories, um, Ishida is going to be lacking. Definitely in power. If you look at Ishida's career, um, he has 24 wins and 9 by way of knockout. So he's not a heavy puncher. And he has 8 losses and 2 draws. Really, his claim to fame was upsetting James Kirkland, which nobody thought he would do. And not to take anything away from a win, because a win is a win, and he definitely pulled the trigger and did what he had to do to win the fight. However, I've said this previously, I feel James Kirkland is the type of fighter that has mental lapses, and he's, in essence, his own worst enemy. And whether it's not training hard enough or making crazy decisions, like he he's working with Ann Wolf, and then he fires her, and then he's working with her again, or he's going to jail for doing something outside of the boxing world, or somebody forced him to take black pills or advised him to take black pills. So he's using that and saying that's why he looked suspect and shitty in the Carlos Molina fight. Either way, you slice it, James Kirkland is not a mentally strong fighter, in my opinion. Um, and Kirkland, it was one of those fighters that I seen him. And he was young, trying to get his life together. And I was reading, reading and like watching um, things about his backstory. And I was like rooting for him, like, oh, that's cool. And he just makes it hard for you to root for him based on some of his questionable decisions. But anyway, um, Ashida did beat James Kirkland fair and square TKO in the first round, I think it was. So that I take nothing away from Ashida. It's not, I mean, he has no control over another fighter's personality, so to speak. But realistically, that was the last great thing, in my opinion, that uh, Ashida has done. If you look, he's fought other people like P-Rog, but he lost that fight via unanimous decision. And he also fought Paul Williams and lost via unanimous decision. But again, Paul Williams, since the Sergio Martinez rematch, when he was brutally knocked out in the second round, I don't think Paul Williams was the same punisher Paul Williams that we've grown to expect. Even right after that fight, Williams fought Edis Landi Laura, and it didn't look the same. He looked pretty bad. They gave him the win. But I think Edis Landi Laura should have beat Paul Williams in that fight. And then he followed it up with the fight with Ashida, And he, he won that one. Um, so realistically, every time Ashida stepped up to notable names or notable fights, uh, he really lost other than the James Kirkland. He also fought Rigoberto Alvarez, which is Canelo's brother. Um, he fought him in Mexico. And Rigoberto beat him. Austin Trout did the same thing in Mexico, but Austin Trout beat Rigoberto. So, aside from Kirkland, I haven't really seen Ashida rise to the occasion. I will give him credit for traveling to people's backyards, um, similar to Amir Khan. Amir Khan had fought some of his fights in um, other people's backyard, like Lamont Peterson. So, props for going out of his comfort zone to fight people um, and not necessarily fighting. Like I said, Amir Khan's an example that comes to mind. Amir Khan. He's recently getting his fight with Diaz back in the UK, but he hasn't had a lot of his uh, main fights in the UK, so um, he definitely has to come overseas to fight. Same thing with um, Ashida, again, going to Canelo's brother's backyard in Mexico to fight him and that kind of thing. So, again, I see this as a more or less a stay busy fight for Gennady Golovkin. I still think there are other choices for Gennady Golovkin at middleweight. That would have made a little bit more sense. Even if he were to fight Nassam Haddam, the one that fought Peter Quillen on the Barclay undercard with Danny Garcia and Eric Morales too. And I think it also had um, Paul Williams and Pablo Cesar Cano. Even someone like that, 
even though Quillen was able to knock him down, he still showed heart and durability by getting back up and making it to the final bell. Um, another better fight to me would have been Felix Sturm or if he were to fight Daniel Gill or possibly even Chavez Jr. if they can make that fight work. I know Chavez Jr. is still finishing out his uh, suspension for smoking weed or whatever and testing positive for marijuana in his last fight, but he's eligible to return, I think, in June. So if Gennady Golovkin was able to hold off and fight Chavez Jr., I would have loved to have seen that fight. Um, you might, you guys might call me crazy, but I'd rather even see Triple G fight um, Keith Thurman at 154. Triple G said he could make 154, and it's not a problem. Um, I would like to see that. Keith Thurman has power, Gennady Golovkin has power, and I would be anxious to see how Gennady Golovkin looks at 154 since he says he makes it no problem and he can fight at 154. No problem, that's that's what he said in the interview. Um, so I'd be anxious to see something like that even, a lot more than Ishida, um, especially if he can make the weight. It's funny uh, listening to Triple G interview because he, he's still wor working on his English. Mm, I don't know. I'm, Gabriel is a good boy. No, I know. I can do better. <laughs> but anyway, um, Triple G, I have no problems with him. He's very entertaining. Uh, he definitely has power. He hits like a freight train. But before I can start saying he can unequivocally beat Sergio Martinez and Chavez Jr. and people like that, I have to see him against um, some higher opposition. We all know he has power, but he doesn't have head movement. Uh, his footwork doesn't look spectacular to me, so I'd be anxious to see how he deals with somebody who has a chin, has power and pop on their own punches, and uh, just better footwork, and see how he thinks. Someone that's really going to make him think and um, maybe bring the best out of him. So I'd be anxious. I know he has a high amateur background, and I'm not saying he can't beat these people. However, I just need to see a little bit more before I start throwing him in the top 10 of my pound for pound list and, and that kind of thing. I just have to see more against sizable competition. And this Ashida fight is really not going to tell me what I need to know about him because I expect him to beat. Um, it's different to do the Danny Garcia and beat. You're the underdog and you beat Amir Khan. You were expected to lose. They were already talking about making a, a Mayweather and Amir Khan matchup. Amir Khan was supposed to move up to 147 and then he foiled that plan. So, that, that is a bigger statement. So if Ishida can do something like that, then I'll be impressed. But realistically, I see Gennady Golovkin's power, uh, his seven-year youth being a factor. And I really see this as being a, a crossroads fight for Ishida. He might not get knocked out since he hasn't been um, knocked out, I don't think, in his previous losses. But again, I see this being a crossroad fight for him. The type of fight like Arturo Gatti versus Gomez or... Um, Shane Mosley versus Canelo, where they fight, and then after they announce their retirement, like, oh, you know what, I can't compete at this high level anymore, I can't take this amount of punishment, and they reconsider their career. I really see that um, happening in this particular fight, like Ashida fighting Gennady Golovkin, realizing that, you know what, there's some hungrier dudes, some stronger dudes, and I'm 37 years old, maybe it's time to call it quits, and I really see it being that type of fight where um, like the Jorge Arce versus Nonito Donaire. Um, Jorge Arce is like, you know what? I'm going to retire after this. I kind of see it being that type of fight. So leave me a comment and let me know what you guys think. Um, can he pull off another James Kirkland-esque upset? Or is it Gennady Golovkin all the way? Either way, as always, hate, comment, or subscribe. Until next video, it's Ego signing off.